Alrighty, my friends, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. We have got an awesome video I know you guys are gonna absolutely love. So if you guys have been following along our last couple previous videos, if you haven't, you should go back and watch them, but we have been down here in Delaware at our good buddy John Muldoon's Muldoon's Performance Transmissions, uh, getting some work done on a couple different builds. Today on the list, we have got our 2015, which we have dubbed Ali's truck in the shop. And what we're gonna be doing today is something that's gonna be very relatable to a lot of you guys. Now, we do get crazy, we do get wild. We go full builds over here. We go full builds over here on 48s and 68s. And maybe that's not everybody. Maybe you're just starting out uh, really at the base layer. And what we're gonna be doing today is kind of fixing a, a huge, massive, major problem in your 68 transmission. So 07 and a half to 18 trucks, maybe it's something you drive, probably something that you know somebody else that drives. So what we're gonna be doing is taking care of the main massive issue inside this transmission. Best of all, it's not a huge dollar item. It is not a huge pull your whole transmission out problem. It's something that you guys can do in your driveway. And we're gonna go through what that problem is or problems i should say and we're going to fix it we're going to take your we're going to take your sloppy 68 we're going to make it saucy so that's what we're here doing today follow along we're going to drop our transmission pan get this thing up on the lift and kind of show you and run you through what that problem is and obviously the muldoons the saucy fix for it as one package one complete package that you guys can do fix and take care of so Without further ado, me, Tommy, we're gonna get this thing up on the lift. We're gonna take it out, we're gonna show you guys. So like I mentioned, we're using our 2015 truck and for most people that do or don't know, uh, completely bone stock transmission. So perfect candidate for what we're about to show you. Now, uh, most people will associate Ram trucks with the Cummins engine, which will run and last for a very, very long time. Now, the transmission behind it as a whole, not a bad unit at all, but the major problem, the major uh, pinpoint issue that we are gonna be fixing and talking about and what we removed from the truck, again, very easy for you guys to tackle yourself is the valve body in the truck. That is the major Achilles heel of this entire truck, so to say. And there's a lot of problems, not just one, not just two. There is a lot of little issues and problems inside the valve body that can kind of uh, take away from the longevity of your truck. And also some of these issues, uh, while some may be minor, some are major enough that they could actually kind of destroy and ruin the entire transmission completely. So we're, what we're trying to do and accomplish is take a issue that is kind of a small issue and not turn it into a massive issue because if some of these things that we're about to show you happen in your truck whether it's stock or not uh, they can basically take out your entire transmission so we're here with John from Maldoon's performance transmissions we're gonna run you through those issues of kind of what I mentioned so there's a plethora of them correct John and correct. take it take take it away They're, they they get tired of hearing me talk so take it away all right so we're gonna go over some of the engineering oversights with the 68 RFE valve body and the components that we put in the valve bodies to make sure you don't experience any of those issues. If you look at the valve body here, these are the accumulators and these stroke at the respective um, shift time and, and for the respective gear change. And when they stroke, there's spring pressure that goes against this plate on the side of the um, the valve body uh, channel casting there. And we have seen a lot of these plates, um, they'll deflect, they'll start to bend because they're a thinner uh, material. They'll start to bend and eventually, the I guess the, the more impact on the plate will actually cause the bolts to either break off or they'll strip out. It's just a really bad scenario where things, they didn't use, the correct amount of fasteners 
and the gauge thickness on the uh, side cover there is, is just not enough. So that's the you know, number one thing we do to completely eliminate that from happening is we install a thicker side cover with more hardware. So when we uh, have the valve body broken down and we're building it, we actually drill the casting in these areas so we can support you know, more hardware will be accepted on there. You have more fasteners holding it down, you have a thicker plate, and you're not going to run into the issue of this plate deforming, deflecting the hardware, you know, blowing out. We also use a little bit better hardware than what comes with the factory. When we replace this side cover, since we have this section of the valve body apart and the accumulators are easily accessible, we do also upgrade the accumulators from the factory plastic style to a um, aluminum, billet aluminum style, which has an additional sealing ring. And these additional sealing rings are going to seal better inside of that bore in the valve body. They also have more support and they won't get cocked in the valve body and get stuck. Moving over to this, this is the solenoid switch valve. And this is a common wear area in the 68 RFE valve body. A lot of folks get a P0871 code. Um, and these, these three little pucks down here, they'll get stuck and they'll get jammed. And from there, you know, the valve can't do its job. It can't oscillate in the casting anymore. Next, we have some of the items that we feel are necessary when you're replacing the valve body. Pan gasket, OEM filters, and this is the threaded steel nipple. Um, so this would be received up into the transmission case. And the reason why we like to upgrade this is these nipples, if you go hulk tight, uh, these can crack or strip. This is one of our complete 68 RFE valve bodies ready to go in. I think Greg's been calling it the sauce boss. The sauce boss. The sauce boss. The sauce boss. boss 68 fix. The new valve body also comes with a thicker channel casting, which once again is going to help uh, lessen any of that deflection and warping. The castings are also flat sanded on our flat sand table. You can kind of see this area here, but the, the whole, once the valve body's disassembled, the whole thing gets flat sanded. Pancake, perfectly flat. And um, that also ensures no cross leaks. Upgrading the pan on the 68 RFE. Since this is such a big opening and they come with a factory uh, stamped steel pan, if you put a cast aluminum pan, you've got all these pan bolts um, and you've got the rigidity from the cast aluminum, you can see the difference in the thickness of the material between the cast aluminum pan and the steel pan. So that's one other reason why, you know, doing the deep pan is a good idea to help keep that case nice and rigid, keep things from flexing, keep the oil where it's supposed to be. With our Sauce Boss 68 valve body, you also get a new solenoid pack. So that thing is bolt in and ready to go. In case you uh, are a little bit more of a visual learner, I know we talked about all of that stuff, but what we're actually gonna do with the valve body out of the 2015 truck is we are gonna actually fix it and kind of show you guys every little issue and how it's fixed. And then obviously you guys can see the before and the after here ahead of time, but we're gonna go through the entire process and show you guys all the fixes. Uh, that way you guys can see all of that stuff firsthand. So I think we're ready to tear that one down completely and get that thing up and running. And again, uh, all of these little issues uh, can give you big problems. Some can completely take your transmission out. Some can leave you on the side of the road. Uh, again, whether it's a stock truck or not, uh, this is something easy to do to fix to make sure your truck has a long, happy life. see a slight wear depending on the light gotcha hard to see on camera but this is where you said that valve basically slides back and forth yep, the solenoid switch valve goes right in right in this slot right here and if you look right through this little window Greg you'll see a tiny bit of wear it's not super concerning but you know, Again, mine mine is uh, fairly new with yeah, twenty thousand miles on exactly. it. Exactly. When you have these units with hundred, 
200,000 miles on them. They're really beat up in here. Gotcha. And You'll be able to see a lot better oh, yeah. if, with, a, with a more mileage one, but yeah. uh, this is the stuff that we're going to be flat sanding. Yep, going to take this over to the flat sand station, get it all, you know, perfectly flat and and then that's where seal. That's where these plastic boys again. Plastic, plastic is just junk. Plastic has no room for something that you want to live forever. So that's where the uh, more upgraded, nice, fancy billet accumulators go. Billets yep. go. Nice. Yeah. And surprisingly, all of your bolts they were still tight. All right, we'll take that. I'll take yeah. that again on a on a lower lower mileage, lower mileage unit. You know, we're not going to see some of the destruction that you might with maybe higher. some of the higher mileage stuff that comes through here. So, yep. so are we broken down completely now? Yeah, we're ready to go. Ready to uh, ready to uh, rehabilitate and improve. are pretty much ready to reassemble right tommy correct so we've got all of the repairs done and we're ready to reassemble yep we got our flat sanded we have our additional holes drilled and tapped for the accumulator cover we have the solenoid switch valve bore reamed out and we can um, see it's all it's nice and smooth and the bore is all nice fixed and shiny in there. in there i guess one thing that we may or may not have hit on in the beginning uh is the fact that this bore right here with that valve you can actually test, correct? Yes, we vacuum check every single one. Got this um, little, little, little vacuum. Yep. Set that on there in the respective lands of where it needs to be. And what does that show you? I guess when you vacuum check it, you can actually see how war that bore yeah, is and exactly. how much fluid is gonna either exactly. be in the place where it should be or bypassing? Correct. Okay, yep. cool. So she's perfect, ready to go. We'll and then start we've, got, we've got pretty much everything else yep, ready to set to go, right? Our cover, our bill of accumulators, bill of channel plate, Ready to go. Sweet. Awesome. Let's reassemble. Assemble. That's a wrap, Jack, on uh, on the Sauce Balls 5000. Sauce Balls 5000. Yeah, I threw, the, I threw the numbers in there. I'm really getting yeah. really getting crazy with this name, but uh, <laughs> valve body's done, complete. Uh, we're pretty much ready to throw it back in the truck. Uh, we're gonna show you guys some things on the truck side, and it's pretty much it. Valve body complete to the truck we go. All right, so we're underneath the truck uh, with everything that's gonna come in this kit for you guys. We didn't really go over the 
uh, removal of the factory valve body, but we're gonna kind of go over some of the installation loose, or the removal loosely, and then kind of cue into the installation. Now, one thing that you guys will see and kind of encounter when you take your old valve body out, there's only six bolts that hold it in, uh, and you need to remove this connector, which is on the side of the transmission. Now, in order to get to that plug, you normally will move uh, the park linkage up here, which essentially moves this pin inside the transmission. Now I'm only really mentioning this because when this pin moves, what that does is it mates up right here on your valve body to uh, this parking linkage. And you can see where this groove is that meets that pin inside the transmission here. So uh, as you removed this cable from the side, and I know it's very hard to see as we're up in here, you can see this moves because you need to get to the connector. Now, uh, what's essential when you put the valve body back in is that this pin meets that groove perfectly because if you try to force it or ram it, uh, it never ends well. And what ends up happening is this pin uh, is, is gonna have a bad day. It's gonna have a problem. And the worst part about that is uh, that's not something you can fix outside of the trans. Now, uh, again, if you guys can handle installing a turbo or wheels on your truck, uh, you guys can still handle this installation, but we're just trying to, you know, avoid some of the pitfalls, uh, that have been seen, uh, previously about putting one of these in. So that's really, that's really it. Again, it's a very bolt in bolt out installation. So we're going to kind of get to installing this, but wanted to mention that specifically, it does have dowels that align in the case up here. Tommy's, Tommy's working our light magically, but you can see we've got dowels that kind of receive the valve body, but you need to make sure that pin kind of sits in there nicely. So Tommy, what else do we have here that kind of comes with the kit that we're gonna install a change and that way people installation wise can kind of be prepared for? Okay, so we have the sump filter, uh, OE Mopar filter. They're gonna come to you and they're gonna have this tab. You're gonna to need to trim that tab so it's gonna be flush because it needs to be able to seat fully. And with that tab there and the billet channel plate, it does not seat fully. So you're gonna to have to trim that flush. Be very careful not to crack the filter housing, this portion of it. What do you normally use, like some flush cuts? Yeah, some flush cuts usually do a nice job. Um, you're also gonna get your steel spin-on filter, um, adapter piece there. It's gonna come, it's gonna have this plastic one in there filter wrench and a 12 millimeter and just insert it there you can take it right out like that throw that sucker away then you can take your spin on filter and your nipple this one's already pre-installed but thread it up in there this is a 13 16 Make sure it's tight. You don't need to go crazy with it, but make sure it is tight in there and then you can put your filter on. We also have this very, very nice uh, reusable gasket that we're going to include with it. So you don't have to worry about the paper one and going to find one somewhere and the factory one, leaks. You said the factory ones are... Your factory pan is RTV to the case. Okay, so just know that. Uh, I think we, we, didn't, we didn't mention that, but your factory uh, pan and it's RTV'd it, and there's no drain on it. So be prepared. Hopefully, uh, if you guys saw with the way we took this pan out, kind of loosen it, kind of cock it, but be prepared. You might make a mess. I'd bring yeah. some towels down there, but uh, <laughs> aftermarket gaskets are a paper gasket. Uh, again, these nice reusable ones, which are really popular on the 48s, uh, are the way to go, especially for servicing, stuff like that. So you got the nipple, you got your filters, you got to modify some things, you got your gasket, and we're pretty much ready to install the valve body. We'll get that installed and we'll kind of show you that. We got some torque sequences uh, that we need to do correct. Correct. But it, it's also kind of helpful to have a friend if you know you can. If to, you have friends, I mean, yeah. some people, you know. <laughs> you know. Some people like working alone, I don't know. But um, it's a little bit heavier than your factory one with the billet channel plate on there. Okay. Kind of so holding having, it up in having there. Having an extra set of hands to hold it up in there while you start your bolts in in here your six bolts in there okay and uh snug them up and then go back and torque them and torque is 105 inch pounds 
that will be included in the instructions when you receive this but 68s are definitely a little more specific torque. with torque i mean yes. they're the the bolts are just a little tinier especially with the pan too yes uh, 100%. so valve body and pan bolts yes don't go hulk smashing anything in there Correct. so yeah all right well we're gonna get this pin lined up we're gonna make sure that's good and then we're gonna reconnect our linkage up here and the plug which again i know it's hard to see uh but yeah we're pretty much ready to get this bad boy installed So that's pretty much gonna wrap up the installation part of that. Again, I think on the website you can uh, select your, if you wanna reuse your factory pan, you can. Uh, again, a lot of the aftermarket pans, and normally you're like an aftermarket pan would be like the cool option if you wanted something cool. But again, uh, the aftermarket pans do actually add case strength and kind of rigidity like John talked about. So uh, we are gonna go ahead and put a aftermarket pan on this unit. Um, and then we'll be pretty close to being done. We do have a little little top secret uh, secret here at the end of what we may have been doing to this thing in the background, but we'll get to that after we get to guys we are pretty much wrapped up underneath the truck we got the pan on we are good to go one thing i do want to mention and talk about real quick uh while we're at it is the pretty much the last and final step before we kind of fill the fluid up and get the truck done and that is the quick learn process that is mandatory when you go ahead and put this valve body in most of you guys are kind of familiar with the 68 and relearns um, because we have a lot of new stuff new electronics new solenoid pack uh the quick learn process is kind of mandatory when you do this now you can do that a couple different ways scanner uh, we've heard that you could do it with alpha obd but it is mandatory when you put this in to kind of reset the computer get everything happy to make sure that uh, everything is jiving electronically with the transmission so uh, just make sure that is kind of noted and you guys know that you have to do that uh, you don't want to find that out after you're already kind of dropping the trans and you need the truck the next day so quick learn gotta happen but we're pretty much all wrapped up underneath the truck we're going to lower the truck down fill it up, get it done, get it running, uh, do the quick learn on this truck. Uh, one thing, a little, little secret here, uh, while Tommy was building my sauce boss, which is now installed, if you guys can see this nice little beautiful tag, uh, I may have slipped, fell, tripped, found some tools, and we may have put a stage two Muldoons in the 15. So I didn't want you guys to think that we're just doing just doing the sauce boss. We decided to, you know, up the recipe and do the full sauce on this truck. But uh, for most of you guys who just need the sauce boss 68 solution, uh, that is the way to go. There's absolutely nothing wrong. But I didn't want you guys to think that we, uh, we, we, were, we, we were still rocking the stock trains because, you know, this black, beautiful paint job, you know, just uh, anyway. All right, so we're gonna lower the truck down, finish it up. But if you guys need a solution, doesn't matter if the truck is stock or not, and you want your transmission to live a long, happy life, Sauce Boss is the way to go and get you up and running and basically make the transmission last as long as the engine. 68 is a great transmission and the valve body fix fixes all of the major, major pitfalls uh, of the factory valve body. So take care of that. You'll live a long, happy life with your 68, but that is pretty much gonna wrap up this video. Huge thank you to Tommy and John, as always. This kit, I would say, this uh, group bundle is on the website. We'll probably throw a link down, which gives you guys pretty much access to everything. There's a couple drop down menus on that, uh, but go pick one up, go check them out. They're ready to go. And that's pretty much a wrap, guys. We'll see you in the next video. See ya.